I am Roxana Kramer from Argentina. I'm not a social psychologist, I'm a philosopher, and I will present a work in experimental philosophy about the impact of authority figures in our ideas of justice. I invite you to rate your agreement with this quote from 1 to 10. We win justice <coughs> quickest by rendering justice to the other party. Okay? Now imagine what would have happened with a group if we told them that this quote belonged to Mahatma Gandhi? We have another quote, knowledge without justice ought to be called cunning rather than wisdom. Now imagine what would have happened if we gave this quote to another group with the name of Plato. And here we have the, the results. In the right, the author condition. In the left, the anonymous condition. When they knew that the quote belonged to a prestigious figure, the score was higher. We replicated several times the same study with different quotes. Life is, is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Now, imagine what would have happened if we gave the same quote to a group with the name of Albert Einstein. It's a real quote of Einstein. Failure does not necessarily show incompetence. Oedipus had value, was intelligent and persevering, but was a victim of circumstances. Now imagine what would have happened if we gave to another group the same quote with the name of the Argentine writer Jorge Luis Borges. This is a fake quote because uh, we wanted to see as much as possible, the difference between the person and the idea. Borges would have never written that quote. And here we have the results with another quote of Gandhi, an subjective idea of truth. Again, big difference in the case of Einstein here, the first one, no? When they knew it belonged to Einstein, they liked it the double. So, we replicated the study with a quote of Dostoevsky, a quote of Oscar Wilde, a quote of uh, Tolstoy, and we added another question. How much do you think, in a scale from 1 to 10, that knowing the author of a quote could influence the score that participants give to that quote? And what we found was a low, a very low awareness here of how much the author could influence the agreement. So the research objective was to explore through several, through several studies how our judgments of behaviors and political ideas as fair or unfair and ideas in general tend to be biased by the opinions of prestigious figures. So, study one suggests that the author bias can lead us to overestimate some ideas related to justice or to other issues just because they are signed by prestigious figures. Participants tend to underestimate this influence and the bias is in some way related to the findings of Milgram, but in the domain of beliefs. When we recognize an authority as legitimate, his ideas seem more persuasive and attractive. The strongest effect was in the case of Einstein, no? The, the, the score was the double in that case. Since its origins, philosophy, history of culture, and science in general, encourages us to evaluate each idea for its own value, and not because a prestigious person says so. The history of culture can be seen as a process in which we gradually uh, examined ideas for his own value, for its own value. To believe in what a prestigious person says can be a good heuristic, but nothing is true or false 
just because a person says so. There is no logical relation between both. So this story, the first one, shows some empirical evidence about the, the authority fallacy, an argument that argues that a person, a position is true just because an authority says so. Carl Sagan said, one of the great commandments of science is mistrust arguments from authority. Too many of such arguments have proved too painfully to be wrong. Authorities must prove their contentions like everybody else. So now, yes, we did a second study in which we tried to, to, to see if when we don't estimate a person, we tend to underestimate what he says. We took 86 subjects randomly assigned to two groups, anonymous versus author condition, and they were asked to put a score of agreement to statements about justice of the former president of Argentina, Cristina Fernández de Kirchner. These are both quotes. They were not very well known. The first one, if you don't have a friend or a relative, you don't enter even disguised as a monkey to the judicial system. The second one, in Argentina, we should remember and take as an example those who are able to give everything for their values. We also explored the political preferences of the participants. And we asked them if they were willing to vote for the party of the president in the next parliamentary elections. We know that uh, this is not a completely reliable proxy of ideological agreement, but as the correlation was high, it deserves our attention. From the 86 subjects, 71 said that they wouldn't vote for the official party. And we only analyzed the data of this group, the group that wouldn't vote for the president. And this is what we found. When people knew the quote belonged to her, the score was considerably lower in both quotes. So this suggests that when we don't value the author of an idea, we can underestimate its value. The distortion was even stronger than in the first study about prestigious figures, perhaps because it is about politics, perhaps because politics have a greater emotional commitment. This study shows some empirical evidence related to the abdominal fallacy that is rebuted, rejecting the person who asserts it. So this is part of a broader project that tries to uh, show empirical evidence or, or to find empirical evidence in fallacies. Definition of the author bias. It's a distortion that consists in attributing more or less value to an idea depending on the person who generated. When we value a public figure, we can overestimate his ideas, and when we dislike him, we can underestimate him. What would the heuristic of the author bias be? This is just because a reliable person says so. This is false because a non-reliable person says so. We ask ourselves, does this happen with facts, with objective facts? So we, when we interpret political and judicial events, is our judgment biased depending on the perspective adopted by the politicians that we appreciate or reject? So we did another study days after the death of prosecutor Alberto Nisman, who was investigating the former president of Argentina at that moment, we wondered if there could be a bias in the analysis of the causes that led to his death. Four days after Nisman died, he, was a, he had accused President Cristina Kirchner to cover up, obstruct justice, and protect the perpetrators of the bombing of the Jewish center AMIA in 1994. The attack, which left 85 people dead and hundreds injured, was the worst in the country's recent history. Nisman investigated the case for more than 10 years and believed that the Iranian government and Hezbollah were behind it. So this research took place the first days after Nisman died, when President Christina Kirchner at that time told that she thought that he had committed suicide, when most people thought that he was murdered. So in the study, again, we asked for the political preferences of the participants, and we asked three questions. Do you think that the prosecutor Nisman committed suicide? 
Do you think that the investigations of Nisman are right? And which candidate will you vote in the next election? And what we found, again, was a strong alignment with the thought of Cristina Fernandez Aquino. People who were willing to vote for her were aligned with her idea that he had committed suicide, 40%. Not most of them, but if we compare the 40% with the ones who were not willing to vote her, 6% only thought that he had committed suicide. And the second question, do you think that the investigations of Nisman are right? Again, when they were willing to vote her, they said that uh, they were not right, and they, when they were not willing to vote her, they said they were wrong. So among both questions, we find that the more relevant is the first one. Did he commit suicide or was he murdered? Because it's not a political question. It's an objective fact. So we see the bias with an objective fact and not just with, with an opinion. As we said, the bias seems to be stronger in political issues. So our last study, can the author bias be reduced if people know about this bias? So we did another study in which we added a third informed author condition, telling the participants we have done several studies that suggests that we tend to overestimate the value of ideas when they belong to prestigious figures, try to estimate the value of these quotes regardless the author to whom they are attributed. So what we found was a reduction of the bias effect when people knew that they could be influenced by the prestige of a person. So some conclusions. The author bias could help to explain why, when people belong to different groups, it is so difficult to be rational and evaluate ideas and behaviors in a more objective way? Why the alignment with the ideas of high-status persons, university professors, uh, religious figures, political candidates, the boss, or anyone we respect is so, so easy? Why political disagreement is so violent? Why media are less interested in solving problems based on evidence than interviewing famous people who talk about them? Why it is so difficult to assess ideas by their intrinsic value? When we listen to the name of a person that we don't like, emotion may blind us, and we cannot objectively assess if what he says is true or not. Being rational is not only being capable to argue, but also to be convinced by a person, whoever he is, if he gives good reasons. For our hunter-gatherer ancestors, it could be costly to disobey authority or mean the difference between death and life. David Myers tells the story of a man who wrote more than 700 letters to his girlfriend asking her to marry him. He married the postman. There is some wisdom in this, for our ancestors' familiarity was evidence of safety. Our species survived because it evolved in small groups in which we paid more attention to persons than to abstractions. And this perhaps could help to explain why the image of a dead child in the beach moves us more than statistics about deaths of illegal immigrants, why courses that have the name of philosophers in the title are more popular than the ones centered on ideas. How can we avoid the bias? Realizing that we are vulnerable to it, remembering that people we admire are fallible and that people that we don't like can say something true, imagining that an idea of our favorite politician is said by the politician of another party, in an important issue asking the opinion of a devil's advocate, we said in the beginning that science and the history of culture can be seen as a process in which the principle of authority was gradually replaced by the free examination of ideas. This is a project of Socrates, of enlightenment, and of it's, it's one that can invite us not to base our ideas of justice on tradition or on what the majority says. So this phenomenon can be seen in fake quotes that we, we can see on the internet, for example, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing one on, over and over again and expecting different results. Signed by Benjamin Franklin, Einstein, 
and so forth. Here we have a real quote. No man can safely be trusted with unlimited authority. Let's hope we can value this quote, not because it belongs to Hume, but because it, it's intrinsic value. So I don't know what you think about this talk, but if Einstein would have given it, perhaps you would have liked it the double. Thank you <laughs> very much. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think you would get uh, as a result if you give that last quote from Hume and attribute it to Angelina Jolie? <laughs> oh, interesting <laughs> question. We should test it. <laughs> Perhaps, uh, I don't know, it's an intuition. Uh, it would have more value uh, in, in a philosopher in this place, <laughs> attributed to Hume. But um, beauty also uh, convinces, <laughs> it's persuasive. I mean, there's, this, there's this temptation by musicians to be political figures, apparently. And, and so I've always wondered whether the audience actually responds as well to that as the media does. Yeah. The media needs that stuff up. And I can understand, for instance, the UN using celebrities to popularize their programs, but I've always wondered whether or not these things actually yeah. have... In interesting to, to test. What we did is, what we put in one condition, the, the most common name in Argentina, Juan Perez, and afterwards we put it in English, John Perez. Mm -hmm. and, and it was higher in John Perez <laughs> than in Juan Perez. In English it's better the quote. It's the author, the name of the author, not, not the quote in English, no? The name of the author. Yeah. Do you think there's any differences with, between cultures? Do you think it's like if, if you did this and it's on Argentina and you do it other places? Then um, my intuition is that it's the same, but we, we should replicate it in another country. I mean, the conditions, like you said, like, like the impressions of a line versus a John, you know, can tell you something about what the Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th there is a lot of evidence, for example, that uh, women's abstracts and women's papers are not so published. I have here the, the information in journals, academic journals. So there is a bias, a gender bias there. Uh, yeah, th there are some other works in this direction. Uh, but as far as I know, uh, what is related to fallacies has not been enough studied. Okay. That's all we have. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.